What is going on, Cantaloupes? Throughout this video, you're gonna be able to play a fun game called Watch Mike Lose His Voice as he discusses 32 NFL teams. A big shout out to all you guys who helped me out picking this list on Twitter. This is the worst draft pick in every NFL team's history. The Arizona Cardinals, Andre Wadsworth, the third overall pick in 1998. Wadsworth registered just eight sacks in his three seasons and was out of the NFL after the 2000 season. The Atlanta Falcons, Andre Bruce, the first overall pick in 1988. After 12 sacks through his first two NFL seasons, he just had four through his third and fourth. The Falcons let him leave via free agency after four inconsistent years. The Baltimore Ravens, Travis Taylor, the 10th overall pick in 2000. In five seasons with the Ravens, Taylor finished with just 204 receptions and 15 touchdowns. He was out of the NFL after the 2007 season. The Buffalo Bills, Mike Williams, the fourth overall pick in 2002. He was a consensus All-American in 2001. The Bills thought a standout guard from Texas would be a franchise building block. Williams simply never panned out. He lost his starting role and was released after the 2005 season. The Carolina Panthers, Ray Carruth, the 27th overall pick in 1997. Listen, he was okay for the Panthers, mediocre at best, but then in 2001, he was charged with conspiring to murder in the first degree and has been in jail ever since. The Chicago Bears, Curtis Innes, the fifth overall pick in 1998. He spent just three seasons with the Bears rushing for just under 1,500 yards and four touchdowns. He was out of the NFL a short time after the 2000 season. The Cincinnati Bengals, Kijana Carter, the first overall pick in 1995. He rushed for a total 227 yards and 16 touchdowns over his four seasons with the Bengals. He was out of the NFL by 2004. Cleveland Browns, Johnny Manziel, the 22nd overall pick in 2011. If you watch my recent 26 Cleveland Browns starting quarterback since 1999 video, you'll see that this is a tough one because the Browns notoriously select busts. But I'm going with Manziel here because of the insane hype and known off the field issues, yet the Browns still took him and now he's not on an NFL team. Dallas Cowboys, Kevin Brooks, the 17th overall pick in 1985. The Cowboys didn't want Kevin Brooks. They wanted this guy named Jerry Rice, if you've ever heard of him, but the 49ers traded up one spot ahead of the Cowboys and took him. Maybe the Cowboys should have drafted up or, or maybe this pick wasn't actually the Cowboys' fault, but when you look at Brooks' 12 and a half sacks as a Cowboy, you can't help but think what could have been with Jerry Rice. The Denver Broncos, Ted Gregory, the 26th overall pick in 1988. This defensive tackle from Syracuse blew out his knee before ever playing with the Broncos and then was traded to the Saints where he only played three games. He then retired from football. The Detroit Lions, Charles Rogers, the second overall pick in 2003. Okay, Detroit needed a star receiver and they could have had one if they drafted future Hall of Famer Andre Johnson. Instead, they took Charles Rogers out of Michigan State. Rogers had 36 catches for 440 yards and four touchdowns. Johnson had over a thousand catches for over 1,400 yards and 70 touchdowns. The Green Bay Packers, Tony Mandarich, the second overall pick in 1989. Sports Illustrated said that the Canadian star from Michigan State was the best offensive lineman prospect ever back in 1989. The Packers drafted him with the second overall pick, but instead of solidifying the Packers O-line, Mandarich clashed with players and management. He spent just four years with Green Bay, who could have selected Dion or Barry Sanders over him. The Houston Texans, David Carr, the first overall pick in 2002. Carr didn't have any talent around him whatsoever and as such failed to live up to the hype. He finished with just over 13,000 yards and a really miserable 23 and 56 career record. The Indianapolis Colts, Steve Etman. Emton? Etman? He's so irrelevant, I forget him. The first overall pick in 1992 was a sensation at Washington. He had just over five sacks over his three seasons with the Colts. A neck injury derailed his career and he was out of the NFL 
after 1997. The Jacksonville Jaguars, Blaine Gabbert, number 10 overall in 2011. Gabbert only spent part of three seasons with the Jaguars, compiling a terrible 9-31 record. The Kansas City Chiefs, Trezell Jenkins, the 31st overall pick in 1995, played a total of nine games for the Chiefs on their O-line, only starting one of those. He was then traded to the Saints and then the Vikings, but never played a game with either of them. He then tried out for the XFL and didn't make it. The Los Angeles Chargers, Ryan Leaf, the second overall pick in 1998. We all know what happened. He was a can't-miss quarterback prospect. Him and Peyton Manning in the same draft. The Colts chose the NFL's all-time passing leader. The Chargers chose Ryan Leaf. He spent just two seasons as their starter, tossing 13 touchdowns, but 33 interceptions. The Los Angeles Rams, Lawrence Phillips, the sixth overall pick in 1996. He was expected to be a star running back in the NFL, but Phillips ruined his own career by getting into constant trouble off the field. The Rams knew about his problems in college and took the chance anyway. Phillips played just two seasons with the Rams, rushing for just over 1,200 yards and 12 touchdowns. The Miami Dolphins, Deion Jordan, the third overall pick in 2013. The Dolphins traded up for Jordan. Injuries, suspensions, and poor performances left Dolphins fans, including me, all around the world, disgraced by the Deion Jordan name. The Minnesota Vikings, Troy Williamson, seventh overall, 2005. They needed a replacement for Randy Moss, and they sure didn't get it with him. Williamson finished with just 79 catches and just over 1,000 yards and three touchdowns during three seasons with Minnesota. His NFL career just lasted five years. The New England Patriots, Jack Kokanen the first overall pick in the 1964 AFL draft. Kirk Cannon never threw a pass for the Patriots. He finished with just 36 touchdowns and 63 interceptions in his NFL career. The New Orleans Saints, Russell Raxerbin, I can't pronounce his name because he was a kicker and punter, drafted 11th overall. Why? And then he only went on to play five seasons with the Saints. Think about the options that they could have had in the first round, but yet they went with a mediocre kicker. The New York Giants, Cedric Jones, the fifth overall pick in 1996. He was supposed to become the next great pass rusher for the G-Men. Instead, he just had 15 sacks over 73 games. The New York Jets, Vernon Golston, sixth overall, 2008. He was an outside linebacker who was supposed to fit seamlessly into Rex Ryan's 3-4 defense. He didn't record a sack in his three years in the league while also producing 42 tackles. And most of them came on special teams. The Oakland Raiders, Jamarcus Russell, first overall, 2007. This was a unanimous pick by Raiders fans on Twitter. They could have drafted Adrian Peterson, Darrell Revis, Calvin Johnson. No, they picked Jamarcus Russell. Philadelphia Eagles, Mike Mamula, the seventh overall pick in 1995. He played just five years in the pros, all of them with the Eagles. He finished with 31.5 sacks, but if they ever wanted a pass rusher, the Eagles should have taken Warren Sapp, who was available five picks later. The Pittsburgh Steelers, Daryl Sims, the 20th overall pick in 1985. Sims only had three sacks in two seasons with Pittsburgh and was out of the league after the 1988 season. San Francisco 49ers, Ken McAfee, the seventh overall pick in 1978. McAfee lasted just two seasons for the 49ers in the NFL. He caught 46 passes for 471 yards and five touchdowns. Great. The Seattle Seahawks, Aaron Curry, the fourth overall pick in 2009. The Seahawks look to rebuild their defense around a standout linebacker out of Wake Forest. Instead, Curry just played three seasons, finishing with 5.5 sacks. That's it. Curry last played in the NFL for the Oakland Raiders in 2012, but his legacy is, is really nothing more than a bust. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Bo Jackson, the first overall pick in 1986. Yes, he was a great MLB player and an icon for the Los Angeles Raiders, but the Bucs never got what they bargained for with Jackson. He never played 
for the Buccaneers. Tennessee Titans, Vince Young, the third overall pick in 2006. The dude was a stud at Texas and everyone thought he was going to be the next big athletic quarterback star in the NFL. It didn't pan out that way at all though. He played all right his first couple of seasons, leading the Titans to the playoffs once and, and actually being picked to the Pro Bowl in 2007. But by 2011, he'd been benched or injured too many times and his time on any NFL roster came to an end. The Washington Redskins, Heath Schuler, the third overall pick in 1994. Joe Theismann was long retired. The Redskins needed a franchise quarterback to build around. Well, Schuler just lasted three seasons in DC, compiling a four and nine record while tossing 13 touchdowns and 19 interceptions. What was the biggest draft mistake by your favorite NFL team? Join me in the comment section below. Join me on Twitter. Let's keep this conversation going. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button because it helps us out a ton. If you're new to Toro Pro Sports, hit the subscribe button because we put out videos every single day. Until next time, I'm Mike Canalupo. Thanks for watching.